the first American century doesn't have to be the last. America doesn't have to be a declining power. We have the ability through investing on a very large scale to reinvigorate the economy and lock in U.S. national security and prosperity for generations to come. And it's, we have to take advantage of this opportunity. Welcome to Palisades Gold Radio. I'm your host, Tom Bodrovics. Joining me today is Richard Duncan, author of four books, including his newest entitled The Money Revolution. He's also a macroeconomist and founder of the video newsletter Macro Watch. Give us a little bit of an overview on your book and some of the ideas that you presented in. The objective of that book was to persuade the American public and U.S. policymakers that the United States now could and must carry out a very large scale government financed investment in the industries and technologies of the future, investing in things like artificial intelligence, developing fusion, quantum computing, biotech, nanotech, genetic engineering, and all of the industries of the future. That was the theme. So this brings us to what I think is extraordinarily great news over the last couple of weeks. Just about less than two weeks ago, both uh, former President Trump and the Biden administration, almost at the same time, they both announced that they are now supporting the establishment of a U.S. sovereign wealth fund. Now, what does that mean? Well, essentially what it means is they're they understand that it's very important for the U.S. government to finance investments in new industries and technologies so that we win this um, technological arms race and not be surpassed by China effectively. And that is exactly what I was calling for in my book, The Money Revolution, How to Finance the Next American Century. I, in that book, I explain why it would actually be very easy for the United States to finance a multi-trillion dollar investment over the next 10 years in cooperation with the private sector. So what, so there's been some reaction to this, uh, these proposals about the U.S. having a U.S. sovereign wealth fund. Some people have wondered, well, why is it necessary to create a, a sovereign wealth fund when the U.S. Treasury Department already invests a lot of money in, in certain technological development. You know, the U.S. friends, for instance, uh, funds DARPA's research, high-tech research, uh, and it has military, it funds military research. But the significance of a sovereign wealth fund, what this means is the government would make investments in companies or even in startups but rather than just in making the investment and letting the private sector keep all the profits, the government makes the investment, but it keeps an equity stake in these companies so that the profits and the profitability accrue to the U.S. government. In other words, to the American public, the U.S. taxpayers. So I was th so excited to see the Biden administration and former President Trump both announcing that they support the establishment of a U.S. sovereign wealth fund because this is exactly what we need. This is what our country needs for so many reasons. And if we do this, then we're going to have the most extraordinary technological breakthroughs. I mean, we really do have the potential over the next 10 years of curing all the diseases and developing fusion, limit, you know, nearly limitless, clean, relatively cheap energy. And um, you know, just all kinds of new extraordinary technological breakthroughs that would radically improve human well-being and extend life expectancy, long, healthy life expectancy. And by setting these investments up through a sovereign wealth fund, this means that the, that the government will keep the profits coming from this. And these profits then, then can be used to distribute to the American public, for instance, as dividends or as free fusion generated energy, or uh, given that the government would earn so much money from these investments, these investments will pay for themselves many times over, over the next 10 to 20 years. And as, it, as they do, then 
tax rates can be reduced because the income generated from these 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 revolutionary technological breakthroughs uh, would be so large that you know taxes could be reduced um, and even the government debt could be paid down. So this is the way forward. And if that's not persuasive enough, then you know let me hit you with the national security angle. The U.S. national security is in. In, we are at risk of being overtaken by China. This is not, this is not a small risk. This is a, we are, Russia, the Soviet Union has never came so close in threatening the United States national security as China does today. If China continues to expand its investments in new industries and technologies at the current rate, then well before this decade well before the next 10 years passes, they are going to be the undisputed global technological, economic, and therefore military superpower. And the United States is just going to be a has-been vulnerable second-rate power at China's mercy. And there's just no reason for us to allow that to happen when we can have the capacity to out-invest China by a very large margin and that's why I said this is how to finance the next American century. The first American century doesn't have to be the last. America doesn't have to be a declining power. We have the ability through investing on a very large scale to reinvigorate the economy and lock in U.S. national security and prosperity for generations to come. And it's, we have to take advantage of this opportunity. And so Richard, that's what the sovereign wealth offers the uh, opportunity for us to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, you began by asking your listeners to be open minded. And they must be suddenly surprised to hear that both parties are now recommending large scale government funded investment in new industries and technologies. But this is why. I mean, they, Congress finally caught on to the idea that, that we are in danger from China and that we must do this. You know, after we spoke during the last time, you asked me, is your book gaining any political traction? And it had only been out a few months then. And I had to say, admit, no, not really. But, um, but then in August of that year, they passed the Chips and Science Act, which allocated $52 billion for developing semiconductors in the United States, and in total $280 billion for new investments in new industries and technologies. And so that was a major step forward in the right direction. It was just on the, the scale was way too small. And then the following year, later that year, I was invited by um, a congressman to come to Washington and present the ideas in my book to members of the House Ways and, House Ways and Means Committee at a policy dinner in Washington in February of 2023. So at that point, it, had gained some political traction. And I was delighted to have the opportunity to present the ideas in the book to these to these congressmen and congresswomen on the House Ways and Means Committee, which is the most powerful committee in Congress. And so, so I can't tell you how pleased I will, and relieved I was to, to see these announcements that both parties are now in favor of establishing what I've been calling for going back for the last 15 years, starting in my first book, my second book in 2009. 